As Megalopolis slowly draws near, Francis Ford Coppola is a filmmaker that I've really wanted to explore more of, as I haven't really dived into his filmography as much as I would like. And if I want to continue doing this film criticism thing, I think Coppola is a pretty essential piece for me to watch. His films are so important to the progression of filmmaking. And as Megalopolis releases, I intend to see as many of his films as I possibly can. You can already check out my Apocalypse Now review, but today I will be talking about Bram Stoker's Dracula. Now, at first, I wasn't sure if I was even going to cover this movie on the channel because it's not really one that you hear most often when you talk about Francis Ford Coppola. Definitely The Godfather, that whole trilogy is a huge aspect of his films. Apocalypse Now is another one. And Dracula is kind of a little bit down on the tier list in terms of what gets talked about the most when his name comes up. And I think it really needs to be up there because this film is absolutely spectacular and a brilliant showcase of what Francis Ford Coppola is capable of as a filmmaker. I would almost say from just watching this, this might be one of the easiest transitions into his filmography before you get into his really big ambitious projects like The Godfather. The film definitely doesn't lie to you in its title. This is a straight up adaptation of Dracula, just infused with that amazing stylistic substance that Francis Ford Coppola injects into his films. And he does that in this movie in the most imaginative, and creative ways that really enhanced the subject matter and just felt so distinct within the lore of Dracula. I was really, really surprised by just the heights that this film manages to accomplish when this story has been done to death. Dracula is a name that everyone knows about. He is a fictional character that has been told in so many different ways across so many different mediums, and I just can't believe that Francis Ford Coppola was able to find a unique way of telling us this story. And to me, that really just comes into a lot of the stylistic choices within the film. I mean, from the first minute of this film opening, you just get introduced to the most beautiful cinematography that you could ever see. There is a real callback to films in the early 1900s and the way that those films were stylized and created with real art direction and a real form of practicality that you just don't see at all nowadays because digital is just the way to go. And that feels like a shame because a lot of the effects within Bram Stoker's Dracula age like a fine wine. There is a shot within the opening where Keanu Reeves' character is on a train and you see these eyes appear in the background and the way that that was shot and the way that it was assembled was so brilliant and so practical that it just looks magnificent and deserves to be on a big screen today. That is how awe-inspiring some of the shots within this film are. Some other stylistic choices that I really, really enjoyed were the use of shadows around Dracula as a character. When Count Dracula is talking to Jonathan Harker, played by Keanu Reeves. There's this real deception that Dracula is playing on Jonathan, and it's illustrated through the shadows. You see Dracula cover up his emotions when he's talking, and he's trying to manipulate Jonathan, but you see the shadows and the way they're moving. Tell the honest truth here. I just really found that so awe-inspiring, those shots where Dracula is saying something, but the shadow is reaching out to choke Jonathan. Just stuff like that, real visual storytelling is just something that you just never see and is a true testament to how brilliant Francis Ford Coppola can be as a filmmaker. And the way that these shots were orchestrated were once again practical. They were utilizing a different person, obviously hidden, and using their shadow to illustrate that movement 
while Gary Oldman is giving his performance and I thought was an excellent choice within the film and makes this feel so distinct. You also have phenomenal performances almost all the way around. The real standout is of course Gary Oldman as Dracula. I mean, the way that this character is portrayed within the film is so complex and makes you feel very sympathetic towards him in the opening scenes. But then you start to see him commit pure atrocities and become this villain. But Coppola still manages to weave some sincerity and excellent motives behind this character that makes him still so compelling to follow and sympathize with as we reach the latter stages of this film. His love for Mina Harker is completely justified within the context of the film, and you really understand why he feels that way, why he has such contempt for Jonathan. It's just all weaves together so really well and creates some excellent scenes where you feel so conflicted between characters. You are supposed to really get behind Jonathan as a character because he's a good person. He's an innocent soul. However, Dracula is someone that has the capability of love and compassion, but has been so wrongfully treated in the past and being conflicted with this curse of being a vampire where his motivations can be a little bit muddled. And that makes for a complex and nuanced character and Gary Oldman weaves that line perfectly. He knows when to be terrifying when needed, but he also knows when to show that compassion. Gary Oldman also has a tendency to overact at points, and I think in this case it was to the benefit of the film. I think that when he really hams it up, it does create some extremely exciting scenes, especially in the real emotional moments, because in a way, this is a very classical story, and in those classical stories, those overacting and big performances was utilized way more frequently than what it is now. And I just think once again, for the time period of this film and what they're trying to capture, it perfectly fits within the context of the film. Technically, as I mentioned, already really superb as a film, but also in craft elements, it's excellent in terms of bringing some of these characters to life, especially Dracula, who is, of course, maybe the most important character in the entire film. I mean, this whole film is titled after him, and his design is creepy, yet interesting, and captures that full gothic aesthetic that you really want out of this film. It completely makes sense, and the way that this character evolves at points, the costume design and makeup perfectly fit this character, creating an excellent aesthetic that fits within the exact tone that Francis Ford Coppola wants. Excellent decisions the whole way around there. A lot of these period costumes were fantastic. Some of the best costume design and makeup that you could see in a film. It's really at the highest standard that you could possibly imagine. And that of course comes with being in a Francis Ford Coppola film. I mean, his films are always so ambitious and so interesting. Now, there are some gripes that I do have with this film. The one that is consistently referenced is Keanu Reeves' performance as Jonathan Harker. I mean, you have seen Keanu Reeves as an actor, and when he is within a film that kind of matches the energy of Keanu Reeves, it works a lot of the time. But let's be real here, I don't think Keanu Reeves is a technically brilliant actor. He's never the type of actor that you would see win Oscars, but he is great within the action genre and things of that nature, where he really thrives. However, this kind of asks for the complete opposite of that, and you can see that he's just not as well developed as an actor yet. He's kind of going for that Bill and Ted thing. Music. Those animals. But it just doesn't fit here because he needs to be a lot more sophisticated and the English accent that he's trying to go for, you see it break consistently. I did hear that Francis Ford Coppola initially wanted Johnny Depp for this role 
and I do think that does fit the gothic aesthetic, but at times, Keanu Reeves does bring personality to it, so it is a bit of a toss-up, but I do think that at points, it really sticks out, especially when you have Gary Oldman giving the performance of his life here, and they play off each other a lot. So that juxtaposition is really obvious within this film, and can stick out like a sore thumb at points. I also do think as the film progresses, as we get into the second to third act, a lot of those really crazy stylistic choices from Coppola slowly drift away, and I can see some intentionality behind it, but it just doesn't stick out as much as we get into the latter ends of this film. There are some great POV shots that I do think work, some stylish editing, but nothing to the level that we see in that first act, where I was genuinely awe-inspired by what was on the screen at the time, because the shots and the way that these shots were constructed was so sophisticated and interesting that I just couldn't help but be amazed. And while it does still look pretty, it still does do a great job of portraying this story, it just loses it a little bit in terms of its stylish choices. That's just something that I noticed doesn't take away from the narrative and its quality because it's definitely still there and there is definite style there. I'm not saying there's no style as it progresses, it's just less and I did notice it and I kind of wish it just kept pushing and kept trying to do all of these crazy and different ideas because I was really vibing with that and I just wanted to see how much further Francis Ford Coppola could possibly take that style. I also wasn't the biggest fan of Renfield within this film, but he's not in it all that much, so it wasn't enough to really be too bothersome. But in the scenes where Renfield appears, I just felt it bog a little bit because I just kept wanting to see Dracula and the way that he manipulates these people and his goal and how it's really affecting everyone. I just thought that those aspects which is so incredibly interesting and it should have just kind of stayed locked in on that. Obviously there's scenes where Renfield is really integral to the narrative. I wouldn't say cut those, but I don't know, there was just something about a lot of those scenes with that character that just didn't jump out to me as much as others. Overall, Bram Stoker's Dracula is a phenomenal film and I highly recommend that you check this one out. I just think it is just as essential as a lot of Coppola's other works. There are some flaws in here. It's I don't think it's completely perfect, but within this genre, and as for being a retelling of this Dracula story, it's one of the better adaptations that you could possibly find that is injected with such love and care from Coppola that definitely look like it was a real painful thing to put on the screen. And I commend the effort that was taken by every single person that worked on it. Incredible feat of cinematic filmmaking that is definitely worth your time. As a score, I'm going to give Bram Stoker's Dracula a strong 4.5 out of 5. I just think it's absolutely excellent. And those are my thoughts towards Bram Stoker's Dracula. If you've seen the movie, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. Feel free to spoil the film. This thing came out in 1992. Please, I want to hear all your thoughts towards it. Remember to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.